I now call the Des Moines regular city council meeting for December 14th to order and I will have Deputy Mayor Buxton lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Buxton. Well, we have a special event tonight. We have a newly appointed uh, council member, Yoshiko Grace Matsui, and well, count, she was sworn in. This is uh, more of a formal process, but but uh, obviously we do the form, we do this swearing in. I'd like you to go to the podium, introduce who'll be swearing you in, and then we'll go through that process. Hi everyone, this is my wife Sheila Grace Matsui. Hi. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes. All right, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Yoshiko Grace Matsui. I, Yoshiko Grace Matsui. Having been duly elected. Having been duly elected. To the office of City of Des Moines. To the office of City of Des Moines. Council position number four. Council position number six. Six. I, six. <laughs> I said, I meant six, oh. it says four. Okay. Um, do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear that I will faithfully that I will faithfully and impartially and impartially discharge the duties of this office? Discharge the duties of this office as prescribed by law. As prescribed by law and to the best of my ability and to the best of my ability and that I will support and maintain. I will support and maintain the Constitution. The Constitution of the State of Washington of the State of Washington and the United States of America and the United States of America. Good job. Thank you. Let the record reflect that now all seven council members are present. Um, are there any correspondence not previously seen by council? No additional correspondence, Mayor. Okay. It is now time for comments from the public. Uh, I would just like to remind those participants that any person making personal, impertinent, or slanderous remarks will become boisterous, threatening, or personally abusive while addressing the council will be removed from the meeting, and you will have three minutes to speak. And our first uh, speaker tonight is Miss Barbara McMichael. Three minutes, I thought it was two. I was just gonna take my time. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> um, I'm Barbara McMichael, a resident of Des Moines. I'm responding to Mayor Mahoney's recent comments about the need for a Des Moines to pivot. Hooray. And um, I'm also, but I've also been hearing that um, uh, you have to stay the course until the new city manager is hired. And I'm here tonight to urge you that during this interim period, um, the, to deal with concerns that people have already, um, who have elected you, have already been bringing before you, instead of waiting to hear what the new hire has to um, has to say, we have been frustrated um, that you've been muzzled from responding in any meaningful way to our concerns about Des Moines Masonic Home Preservation. That building, as we all feel, is you know the crown jewel of Puget Sound, but our council hasn't really been able to represent this community's overwhelming desire to see that the building be restored and its purpose revitalized. Um, you've already heard from folks, um, so let's get this on the city's 2024 agenda, legislative agenda, and ask for funding to incentivize the Masonic Homes owner to pursue a preservation option for the property via a public-private partnership. Also, I'm sure I'm not the only one in Des Moines whose stomach is in knots about the Port of Seattle's expansion plans. Um, I'm really concerned that in this age of dire climate change, um, you seem to indicate that you're okay with further port development of warehouses in Des Moines at the expense of our already compromised tree canopy and salmon stream. And let's talk about the port's proposed land stewardship plan and tree replacement program. 
These will affect Des Moines residents for generations to come, but the port's public rollout of this plan to the folks most affected, those of us who live in airport communities, um, it's, it was practically non-existent. The port needs to be called to account, and I'm really, really begging you to um, bring those port commissioners and their very well-paid staff to town so that they can explain why they think their plan's so great and if we think they're off base, so we can push back and provide some of our, our thoughts on the matter. So these are my asks, um, robust environmental protect policies to protect our community's health moving forward, and economic development initiatives, including Masonic home preservation, that will elevate our town's unique character and that will serve our local businesses and residents. So those are issues that I think uh, we need to engage with you on and without delay. Thank you, happy holidays. Thank you, Ms. McMichaels. Moving on to Ms. Victoria Andrews. Some of this will sound familiar, so I hope you're listening. Uh, first, I wanna thank Interim City Manager Tim George for his weekly reports, which I get via the Waterland blog, the closest we have to local journalism and well worth subscribing to. When I was a nonprofit executive director, the board and staff held an annual strategic planning session to evaluate the previous year's successes and what we could improve on. We reviewed the current and projected physical health of the organization, and you will touch on that tonight with your decision on the Events Enterprise Fund, which many of us feel has not been fully vetted, especially considering where the budget is projected to be in two years. My boards discussed how to move our mission forward on things that were critical to our constituents, who will be responsible, what it will cost. Some fell off the chart and others rose to the top. Tonight I'd like to address things my neighbors and other citizens have told you more than once. Here at coffee, here at coffees with the mayor, at CAC meetings, and other opportunities. As the ones at the top of the organization chart, the council should remember what we want, tell the city manager what we want, and the city manager will tell the staff what we want, and then they can determine who's responsible, what it will cost, and whether it's feasible. So for your 2024 work plan, in no particular order, one, public safety, in particular increased police presence at our waterfronts and surrounding neighborhoods, which have been plagued by shootings, street racing, noise, and other infractions. Two, create a downtown master plan and reinstate the public planning commission. The CAC is great, but it's not a substitute for substantive, consistent public engagement. Three, provide grant incentives for small or boutique businesses to locate here and provide attractive rent options. Four, overhaul the website so it's one-stop shopping for residents who want to find out what's happening in their city, adding emergency and monthly or weekly push notifications for anyone who wants to subscribe to them via their preferred communication platform. Include links to organizations with whom the city collaborates and or financially supports. Five, reinstate the soundproofing ordinance for any new residential development. Six, offer more informal community engagement opportunities. In addition to coffees with the mayor, which I hope will continue, note that evening meetings accommodate working people and get a better turnout. It would be advantageous for other council members to appear at those to show you're interested in us, not just when you're campaigning for re-election. Seven, apply available legal pressure on the developer regarding specific plans for the Masonic home, because that's what we care about too. Eight, increase our tree canopy. Nine, go after state and port grant funds. 10, stay on owners of empty lots to keep them clean and maintained if they can't be sold. 11, hire a city manager who will evaluate current staff regarding core competencies for the positions they have been promoted to and make changes deemed necessary. And remember that you are his or her boss, so don't cave under pressure, stand up for us. And finally, because you know I can't resist it, hire an experienced credentialed communications director. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Andrews. Moving on to Ms. Sherry Ver Verber. Yes, hi. Mayor Mahoney and Deputy Mayor, Council, City staff, friends and neighbors. I'm Sherry Verberg, I live here in Des Moines. And um, I'm here tonight to just to express a couple of concerns that have been on my mind and kind of capitalizing on some of the things that have come through the uh, 
the Advisory Council. So I am very excited about our development and the Marina Steps project. And my top concern is just around safety. So I've lived in my little condo for 13 years. 12 of those 13 years have been relatively, uh, relatively quiet and peaceful. I've been enjoying privacy, security, and safety that drove my decision to buy this particular unit in the first place. And there were issues for a while, as you will recall, including those hooligans who ran amok down at the uh, marina north and south between us and Anthony's and had other annoying behaviors. And then you closed off the thoroughfare, you gated the uh, parking lot, you made the turnaround, and that was just a huge improvement in quality of life, and it was very much appreciated. Now, during this past year, not just our building but others, we have dodged a shooter at the marina our particular building has been shot at multiple times. We've had our lanai glass panels shot out more than once. We've been robbed, vandalized. We've had vehicles stolen that were parked right outside our gate. We've had catalytic converters taking off the vehicles parked out there and had several incidences of prowlers. So it's not a big leap to see that crime is certainly escalating. It's at our doorstep, and I just feel we're becoming more and more vulnerable. So I wondered what is the specific plan to ensure our continued privacy, security, and safety as access to the marina is expanded. And I recall you saying that gates could be installed similar to the gates project south of us and that those gates would be locked at 10 p.m. Is that still on the table? And I'm very much looking forward to the new gated parking down at the marina. What else can we rely on for our peace of mind? And how will our already short-staffed police department, whom I have the utmost respect and admiration for, really, how will they respond to the escalating crime in our district? My next concern would be the design of the steps themselves. And I'm really, really looking forward to the community gathering where we see some specifics rather than any further conceptual drawings. So what's it going to look like in feet and inches? A lot of us, I think, have responded to one or more of the surveys, um, and I had a little concern about the way the surveys, some of them were designed, because a lot of the answers were multiple choice and we didn't have an option like to write something else, although the document stated we could uh, send, oh, see, now that went off. <laughs> so as I wrap this up, um, I just want to say I do appreciate your collective efforts to ensure the success of the STEPS project while addressing the concerns of us citizens. And on a personal note, I'm so in love with my condo and with this city, and I just need to know that you hold our privacy, safety, and security as your top priorities moving forward. Thank you so much. Sorry about the beat. Thank you, Ms. Ferberg. <laughs> All right, moving on to Mr. Lloyd Lytle. Okay, thank you, Mayor Mahoney, members of this council. Uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, first topic, I wanted to thank the city um, for the ho hosting and bringing in SR3 to our community. Saw them release a couple of seals. So we can saw uh, Mayor Mahoney there, uh, city manager uh, Tim, council member uh, Steinmetz, and uh, chief administrator officer uh, Wilkins uh, there. So it's great to see our city doing that soulful healing work with, um, uh, for other beings around us and connecting to the wildlife and seeing people of all stripes come together uh, for that um, wonderful event. So please bring more of that into our community. Thank you. Um, and it kind of leads me to the, my next topic uh, of tree canopy. I want to support what Barbara said. Um, Des Moines is such a beautiful place. It's always been a really green space. We've got this beautiful ocean here, really connected to nature here. We like to keep it that way. I've seen some things lately that kind of go in the opposite direction, like down Memorial Way, there's this, I don't, I don't even know what it is, but it's like this huge concrete. It's almost like a monolith um, about halfway to the airport there. But I mean, there, it looked like there was like zero balance there in terms of like leaving some trees or something. Um, I know there's a policy like four to one, but that's a little bit cosmetic. It's like, because um, it's not a forest anymore, essentially. You've um, cleared out all the soil, so you have a lot of concrete, and you have small strips of, like, some little trees. And those types of trees they plant are also green only half the year. So they don't plant the Douglas firs or the pines, which are green all year. And you need that 
green to do the carbon cycling, the photosynthesis. If you don't have green, there's no carbon cycling going on. So it's really important to have those um, fir trees. Um, also, um, they absorb sound. We're right under the air planes, and so you want soil and soft surfaces like trees. Concrete and um, typical building structures reflect sound very efficiently, whereas the um, soft structures absorb it. So that's going to help us with noise. It, it also filters the air and helps with uh, community health. So, um, and it also, it's the best, best filter for the ocean because the water comes down and uh, um, it absorbs everything. Whereas if you have concrete, all that oil and the pollutants from the street go straight into the sound and it's going to, you know, harm just like the seals we're trying to help. Also, the beautiful uh, floor of the um, ocean. I know we have an avid scuba community here and uh, tree spaces are going to help, help with that. Um, uh, the last thing, and I also want to give support to the safety issues brought up by these ladies. Um, yeah, it's a shame to see the gunshots there. I think the gates at night are definitely going to help that, so hopefully we can get those. Um, I just want to end on a short um, letter I got from former Bob Arnold, uh, fire chief. Um, he gave me permission to share this. Uh, it's real quick. I walked those halls for 30 years of the Masonic home, spent countless dinners with residents, and enjoyed quiet time in the magnificent library. I now live out of state in retirement. Can't believe this historic structure is planned for demolition. Please let me know what I can do to help preserve. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lytle. All right. Um, we have one committee, board and committee report, and Deputy Mayor Buxton on Sound Side, side Alliance. On the agenda, this is the chair report, so uh, to play, uh, make a play on words in regard to chairs, if you will reach underneath your chair, there's a few of you, about seven of you, that have a little prize taped underneath your chair in the middle. <laughs> yeah, there's one. A couple of you. So there's about seven of them out there. Anyway, yeah. So, happy holidays, and uh, there's a dad joke in there for you. So, yeah, you're welcome. So, in regard to my chair report, my actual chair report, so, uh, for economic development purposes, the city of Des Moines does many things, um, but we have two significant partnerships. Uh, one of them is Soundside Alliance for Economic Development, and this is a... A partnership of five cities, the port, the uh, Southside Chamber, I'm getting lots of feedback, and, um, and the college. And uh, we, it, it was formed to partner resources and information in order to promote regional economic vitality. And uh, the other, um, and then the chair of the policy committee there also serves on the second partner on, a, on the board of Greater Seattle Partners. Greater Seattle Partners is a public-private partnership formed to drive investment and quality jobs into the greater Seattle region, like Seattle-Tacoma region. And this is more on a national and global scale, Greater Seattle Partners. And so the relationships there include like Amazon, Boeing, Microsoft, Comcast, Alaska, um, several elected officials from the greater region. So with those two, Soundside Alliance and GSP, um, they got together and did this really cool thing. Over the last couple months, these two partnerships have been working together to bring strategic global interest to the entire county by engaging in tours. And so Des Moines was on, involved in one of these tours. This was just a couple weeks ago. And it, our city did great. I just want to... Big compliments. The weather was beautiful. We visited commercial sites and our waterfront, highlighted our quality of life and amazing resources here in Des Moines. And this was really um, touching base with this global strategic uh, company out of South Carolina. But it was in this huge partnership with that. It was financed by the port, and all of these cities got together. And it was a great event. Just say it again, Des Moines did awesome. So I want to give special thanks to the port for financing the exercise. And, and then in Des Moines, special thanks to Michael Mathias, 
to Rochelle Caton and Denise Lathrop for their preparation and support for this great day-long event that we had. So, thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Buxton. Moving on to uh, City Manager Report. Mayor, just have a couple items. <clears throat> um, I wanted to announce a save the date of February 13th um, in the evening. Um, and that's, uh, we are going to be holding a Marina Steps Development Forum. Um, it's likely going to be at the Marina, but we haven't confirmed a location yet. We haven't confirmed a time either, but it, it will be in the evening. Um, we just wanted to get that date out there so that everybody's aware. It's a Tuesday, Tuesday evening. Um, we'll be having a presentation on the status of the steps, timelines, um, and then there'll be an opportunity for direct interaction with staff. So once again, that's February 13th. And as we um, have additional details, we'll be um, releasing those on our website and other areas. Uh, next, I would like to uh, call the assistant city manager to come up to update the council and the public on the city manager recruitment process. Uh, let me have this microphone here. So good evening, mayor, council, and community. Uh, my name is Adrian Johnson Newton. I am the assistant city manager. You also may recognize me as the former HR director. Um, I wanted to provide you a brief update on the city manager recruitment. Um, at the council meeting on January 11th, 2024, <laughs> um, the city will be bringing forth a draft RFP, and RFP is a request for proposal, for those who are not familiar, um, looking for firms who specialize in executive um, searches and recruitments. And so we'll be bringing forth that uh, draft RFP for the council to weigh in on the scope, the evaluation criteria, um, and any other points that we need to address in the RFP so that we can issue it. Um, I'd like to offer to the council, if you've not been uh, through this process before or haven't ever given input into an RFP, I'm, we can send you some examples um, so you'll be prepared for the January 11th meeting. Um, our hope is that and desires that the council will be able to settle on the scope, the terms, and that at the conclusion of that meeting that um, the city can issue it so we can identify the firm that will be conducting our, our city manager search. Thank you. Great, thanks. And just just so everyone knows that that's basically our next meeting. The council meets again on January fourth, but that's um, that will be for the selection of mayor. We we don't put a lot of business on that meeting, so January eleventh is kind of our next substantive meeting. Um, and then finally, one last item: the council had asked previously for staff to put together a letter regarding flock cameras. Um, and flock cameras are cameras that are placed in strategic areas that strictly look at license plates, and they put those license plates, um, they're accessible for law enforcement. Um, if there was a stolen vehicle, they could put the plate in there, and then if it pops up on any of these roads, we get alerted right away. Um, it also helps with when there's crimes and there's a description of the vehicle, you can see, you can kind of track where that vehicle's going. Um, so the city of Des Moines has 11 cameras with plans to install 16 total. Um, some of our neighboring jurisdictions also have them, uh, but a lot of them don't. So we'll have instances where we can track a vehicle from a crime to the city border, and then we can't track it anymore. So um, the council had asked us to put together a letter urging our neighboring jurisdictions to look into these cameras um, as part of a, a, a regional approach. Um, and so we have put the, that draft together and we'll be getting that out um, early next week. So, and that concludes my report, Mayor. Any questions of Interim City Manager Tim George? All right. <coughs> Seeing none, um, <clears throat> will the City Clerk please read the consent agenda? Item one, approval of vouchers. Item two, approval of minutes. Item three, King County Cooperative Watershed Management Grant Award, Des Moines Creek Estuary Project. Item four, AHBL Consultant Services Contract. Item five, 24th Avenue South Improvements Project, Puget Sound Energy Easement Amendment. Item six, right of way dedication, Des Moines Theater. Item seven, regional coordination framework for disasters and planned events. Item eight, 2024 to 2025 recycling program professional services contract. Item nine, Department of Ecology, 2023 to 2025 
Water Quality Stormwater Capacity Grant Award. Item 10, Commerce Middle Housing Grant Agreement, and that concludes the consent calendar, Mayor. Council Member Netting. I move to approve the consent calendar as read. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Deputy Mayor Buxton. Is there any council member that wishes to pull an item? Council Member Harris. Items 4 and 10, please. All right, we'll be voting on items 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. All those in favor, raise your right hand. I see it unanimous as it should be. All right, we'll start with item 4. Council Member Harris, you have the floor. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, for the public, this is these are two um, basically linked items, the, uh, a consultant contract for AHBL, um, to provide uh, outreach and uh, information about our uh, housing, middle housing uh, and uh, comp plan, and, um, and then uh, the acceptance of a, a middle housing grant um, based on the information they provide. Um, I'm struggling here, and so I don't want to belabor the point, but essentially um, I have not been, I'm tr in the spirit of the season, I have not been entirely thrilled with the uh, work product generated from any of our public outreach programs over the past several years. This is critical to me because housing is just, I, there, I can't think of anything I'm more passionate about. And um, they were in charge of uh, community engagement for the uh, parks uh, plan, master plan and um, I, the problem I'm having, Council, is that um, we, do, we never get choices, okay? It, there's essentially, and I'm not trying to overstate this, but there's a gun to the head in that you, we're given one choice for the company to do this outreach, and we have to vote for it tonight, basically, because there's a time factor in order to receive the grant and I don't know how to address this process if I don't raise the issue and say please a we need to, we need to separate these community engagement um, firms that we work with from the uh, actual grant receipt um, we need to be able to vet them uh, independent of any money and we definitely need to be able to do that without having that, uh, if we don't vote for it, we don't get the money kind of a thing. But um, we, we should be, we are, we are I, I could go down a long list of examples where we did not reach the very public that we must reach. People in other languages, people in parts of town, the people that should be reached with this stuff never show up to these events. They just don't. Um, and so I'm sorry for going on rhetorically, but um, I'm just really struggling with this. And somehow in 2024, we, this is part of that community engagement the public communication means a lot of different things, but we must reach the people in this town, especially when it comes to housing, who will never visit a city council meeting or who will never go to the senior center or Highline College because it's not on the bus route, okay, for them in order to get to work. We have to do better to meet people where they are, and I think I'm done. I get a motion. <clears throat> Go ahead. I move to authorize the city manager to sign the consultant services contract between the city of Des Moines and AHBL substantially in the form as attached. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Deputy Mayor Buxton. All right. I saw both uh, Council Member Steinmetz and then you, Deputy Mayor Buxton. So I'll start with you. Go ahead, Council Member oh, yeah, Steinmetz. I, I, I actually just had a question. Are these linked? <clears throat> I mean, we can, can the city manager sign the grant agreement and without having necessarily the contract in place for community outreach? Are you talking about item four? I'm talking about item 10. 
Um, but as they were presented by um, Council Member Harris, they're essentially linked. And I want to clarify, are they in fact linked? No. No, they're not. All right. Uh, we have Council Member, uh, we have Deputy Mayor Buxton. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I was searching through my computer here. Just uh, We had a very extensive presentation given, uh, I think, this summer in regard to our housing action plan. And in, um, included in that housing action plan was some census data <clears throat> that indicated what the, the languages and the cultures that we had here. And I think there was something like 7% Seven, may, I'll, I'll be generous, 9% of the population of the city of Des Moines spoke a language that was not addressed with our research and community outreach. They used the languages that covered over 90% of our population. So I will say there were a few people that, yes, this housing action plan and this research and this outreach did not reach but the vast majority, and it was um, also in re the, the plan uh, that was also mentioned, the surveys uh, connected to the parks master plan, it was the most extensive uh, outreach in form and in population that has been conducted since I've been elected. And so I just, I would like to compliment our progress, and if there is more to be done, um, let's take a look at that. But as far as what AHBL has done, and it's, I'm impressed, and they are, uh, re we, they are recommended by MRSC, which is the list that goes out to everybody in the state as um, recommended and vetted companies. So, uh, I feel very comfortable choosing anybody on that list. So I wanted to just cover a couple of those items that were mentioned that give me comfort in voting to move forward with this. Thank you. Um, I would just mention the, and I'll just use the school district. I agree with your statements there. The school district Highline deals with over 100 different languages. It's very difficult to match and meet everyone. But you try to serve the whole of the community as best you can, and I felt they've accomplished this, so I'll support this as well. Councilmember Harris. Uh, I would just point to attachment A, the timeline of services, and, uh, and I'm done. Is there any further discussion before I take a vote? <clears throat> Seeing none. All those in favor of item four, the ABL, AHBL Consult Services, please raise your right hand. I see Council Member Gra uh, Grace Matsui. I got to get used to that. Uh, I see Council Member Steinmetz. I see Deputy Mayor Buxton. I see Council Member Nutting. I see Council Member Oxer and myself. All those opposed, I see Council Member Harris. That item passes 6 1. All right, we're moving on to item 10, which is the Commerce Middle Housing Agreement, Grant Agreement. There's two motions here, and I open the floor to Councilman Heard to introduce it, and then I'll call for the motion. I think I pretty much covered it in my uh, previous speech. Um, they are not linked in legal terms, but um, just factually, uh, if you did not approve the AHBL contract, you would have a tough time meeting the uh, commitments required of the grant. So that's it. We have a motion, Council Member Nutting. I move to authorize the city manager to sign the middle housing grant agreement contract number 24-63326-113 in parentheses between the city of Des Moines and Washington State Department of Commerce substantially in the form as attached. You have a second. I have a second for Council, Council Member Steinmetz. Any discussion before I take a vote on this item? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Buxton. Uh, just besides uh, the uh, comments that I just made in regard to HBL, uh, in regard to this particular thing, there's this is a grant. It's uh, it's for work that is already in progress, kind of. It's it's a continuum of work, and so um, this.
company has already been involved in the beginning parts of this work, and uh, there's no match. So, <laughs> all right, Councilor Steinmetz. Yeah, I, I just want to be clear. Motion one is the grant itself. I hope nobody up here is saying we shouldn't get the grant money that's available to us. We can comply with the terms of the grant. That shouldn't be a problem. That is simply what we're voting on. Should we accept the grant money or not? And that's the motion. Well said, Councilor Brent Steinmetz. Any other discussion before we take a vote? Seeing, seeing none, all those in favor of motion one, please raise your right hand. I see Council Member Grace Matsui, Council Member Harris, Council Member Steinmetz, Deputy Member Buxton, Council Member Nutting, Council Member Oxiger, and myself. Motion passes 7 0. All right. Council Member Nutting. I move to authorize the City Manager to sign the consultant services contract between the City of Des Moines and AHBL substantially in the form as attached. Do I have a second? Council Member uh, Steinmetz has seconded it. Any discussion before we take a vote on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor, raise your right hand. I see Council Member Grace Matsui, Council Member Steinmetz, Deputy Mayor Buxton, Council Member Nutting, Council Member Oxiger, and myself. All those opposed, Council Member Harris. That motion passes 6 1. <clears throat> All right, moving on to unfinished business. We have item one the reconsideration of ordinance number 1782 and 1783. And because it was the movement of the move proposed by Councilmember Steinmetz, I open the floor to you, sir. Thank you. Um, and this was a, a formal motion that I brought uh, the last meeting we were at, which did require a vote of the council at that point, because it was a formal motion. It's not like our normal new business where you've got a couple of people that agree with you and we refer it to a committee. Um, in this case, <clears throat> When we were talking about the franchise fund, uh, the creation of that for uh, events and facilities, the information that was given to us is that we were leaving a lot of money on the table and they wanted the opportunity to go get that money. Um, the more and more we looked into it, um, there seemed to be a couple of problems with that. <clears throat> One, it was a wholesale movement of almost everything in Parks and Recs over into that fund. Two, uh, is that to pay for it, we were going to take a loan from uh, the SWIM, and that loan would be backstopped by the general fund. <clears throat> in the spreadsheet that was produced, uh, and I believe this was produced in good faith by the staff, I'm not suggesting anything other than uh, otherwise, um, but it predicted it anticipated only a $9,000 payment back to the swim fund uh, out of that, which means that the general fund would be responsible for the balance of that, um, <clears throat> you know, essentially uh, $241,000. At a time when we were having some issues, um, not this next budget cycle, but the following budget cycle, when uh, the general fund looks like the revenues may be running a little short uh, and we need to configure that. That is setting up things to fail and that's a really bad idea. It's just going to make the problem that much harder. So um, when that was made clear to me, I decided I could not support uh, the franchise uh, agreement or the franchise fund that we, had, we were setting up for parks and events. Uh, we need to address that much more thoroughly in the budget. Um, I don't think that the general fund um, should be backstopping it, and we certainly don't need a big loan uh, from the SWIM fund in order to make all that work. Um, I think the marketing budget for that first year was only like $10,000, too, if I remember correctly. Uh, you know, if we want to look at a $10,000 marketing loan, so be it. But... Uh, that's a lot different than a quarter of a million dollars for the next each year for the next three years <clears throat> to be backstopped by the general fund, which is going to uh, take away from our flexibility. So uh, if we are leaving money on the table on events and facilities, and I have no reason to believe uh, otherwise, I think that was good information that was given to us. You know, we can go get that, but we don't need a separate 
um, fund to do an enterprise fund to do that. Uh, and as a consequence, I am uh, re I'm, we move for reconsideration uh, of that particular piece uh, of the budget, and so <clears throat> the enterprise fund uh, for events and facilities. And I uh, intend to vote against that tonight. Uh, Councilmember Snipes, could I go to heaven and have you make the motion? I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that would be a really good idea. I got carried away with the rhetoric. Yeah, you did, man. Okay. <laughs> I move to, um, uh, well, it's, it's moving, oh, move to approve the draft ordinance number 23-082, repealing ordinance number uh, 1782. Do I have a second? I have a second, second from Deputy Mayor. Well, well, we'll go with uh, Council Member Grace Matsui for your first acknowledgement. Okay, go ahead. Um, and I'm going to open the floor to discussion before we take the vote. So, um, obviously, Council Member Simons has had his piece. Who would else like to? Council Member Nutty. Yeah, <clears throat> so I voted for the motion, um, the previous motion, to create a. Uh, um, to create an enterprise fund for um, the events and facilities rental uh, it had nothing to do with parks, um, only to make that uh, a revenue e uh, revenue um, equal uh, or or zero um, to to bring our our charges up to our. our what we charge for our facilities up to market rate um, instead of backfilling constantly um, our rental facilities. Uh, so, I mean, I have no problem repealing that as, as long as we do a market study on what our rates are um, and, and actually bring them up to the um, facilities around us uh, so we're not backfilling and, and paying, paying for out of the general fund to keep these facilities up and running. So um, as long as we can do that, I, I'm still interested in an enterprise fund, uh, maybe next budget cycle, if we can't get it figured out. So. Council Member Grace Matsui. Can I clarify if you're asking for an amendment or is this a suggestion? I'm not asking for an amendment. I'm just I'm just stating my piece. Thank you. I appreciate the clarification. I was here when the uh, discussion was had about the enterprise fund um, the first time around, and I believe that many of the steps that were hoped to um, move forward in order to look at the competitiveness of the rates are something that can be accomplished without designating it as an enterprise fund. I think there could be a rate study. I think there could be a restructure of rates. I think there could be a marketing plan and business plan all accomplished without changing this to an enterprise account or fund. And so uh, I support this motion. I, uh, <clears throat> I was willing to see the see it because I want to see the effects of it. At the time when we were making this decision before, there was the potential that we were going to need a couple of police vehicles. And it was going to affect our reserve uh, to a greater amount. That's obviously changed recently in new information. I am not opposed to the enterprise fund, but not today. I see it being something that could potentially be done, and I look for a business that can break even in the future. With more information, I definitely want to entertain this as we move forward in council in the upcoming year or years as we get more data and more information. But so I'll be supporting this, this motion, but I do and will say that I'm committed to reconsidering this down the road when I think we've we've had some other questions answered. And again, like I said, the biggest one for me was uh, when we were making decisions between police and parks and those kind of things that made it a little more difficult and that since has changed. Anybody else? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to repeal the ordinance 1782, raise your right hand. And that passes unanimously. Councilmember Simon's gonna get you to do a motion on the second one, please. I'll even do the motion before I make the case. <laughs> yeah, we're going to try something new. <laughs> i got to mix it up. I move to approve draft ordinance number 23-083, repealing ordinance number 1783. 
and I got a second from Councilmember Grace Matsui. Any discussion before we take a vote on this mo this motion? Councilmember Steinmetz, go yeah. ahead. Just, just to clarify that this this is the loan, uh, this ordinance is the loan from the SWIM fund, which will then be repealed, and so that money will stay in the SWIM fund. So, and thank you for the clarification. Any other discussion before I take a vote? Seeing none, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Passes unanimously, 7-0. All right, moving on to a long-awaited one. Um, the Cecil Powell Neighborhood Park is in improvements in new business, and we will have um, our uh, Public Works Director, Andrew Murgis, speak to us. Good evening, Council and Mayor. Uh, I got some great news for the holidays coming up. Uh, unfortunately, Nicole Nordholm is uh, not feeling well, so I'm going to fill in for her on this uh, Cecil Powell Neighborhood Park Construction uh, Contract Award. So a little bit of background. Uh, the park is considered a mini park in the park's master plan. Uh, there's an original wood play feature that was removed back in 2014, like probably a lot of folks remember. There's deterioration of the wood and everything exceeded its uh, expected service life, so we had to remove it pretty quick. The improvements uh, moving forward are identified in the 2022 through 2027 Parks, Recreation, and Senior Services Master Plan. Uh, we did go through a public solicitation for construction bids. We advertised back in September uh, twice with Seattle Times and Daily Journal of Commerce to try to get the most contractors looking at it. On a then on October 17th, we had five bids come in, which was great for a small uh, park project. We do have one responsive low bid, which came in lower than our engineer's estimate, which is wonderful, uh, with McCann Construction Enterprises at $163,113.15. But in general, a great price for the project, uh, definitely compared to the highest bidder there at $289, uh, which is pretty high. So a couple par uh, proposed park improvements. These figures are a little uh, not too detailed, but enough to give you an idea of what's going on. We've got new play equipment going in, so a play structure uh, with some climbing, a couple slides out there, a little teeter-totter. Uh, on the center of the screen, that's a circle. That's one of those little climbing rope ladders that spin around for kids. And then a couple uh, swings over onto the right-hand side of the figure over there. We also have ADA access, so we've got a path that's gonna be built around the park along with two benches and a picnic table, I believe. And I think there's a bike rack as well going in. Another picture uh, of some graphics from one of the vendors we worked with. There's kind of everything I just mentioned there, the slides, a little uh, turning element there for the kids and the accessibility around it. So I think it's gonna be a great little pocket park or a little small park for the community out there. And then this is the proposed council motion for consideration on approving the construction contract. And that concludes my presentation. Okay. Can I get a, can I get a motion? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Buxton. I move to approve the public works contract with McCann Construction Enterprises Incorporated contractor for the Cecil Powell Neighborhood Park Improvements Project in the amount of $163,113.15. Authorize a project construction contingency in the amount of $22,000 and further authorize the city manager to sign said contract substantially in the form as submitted. Do I have a second? Second. Councilmember Nutting, I got the second on. Um, all right, go Councilmember Nutting. Question. Um, so there's ADA accessibility around the park, but we weren't uh, required to um, make the play equipment ADA accessible. No, the play. So let me back up on what I meant by ADA. So everything is going to be ADA compliant and safety compliant. Uh, the walking path. We tried to make sure we had ADA walking path inside the actual park itself for wheelchair accessibility. Uh, all the park features will meet current standards in ADA as well. Okay, so like, uh, it won't be wood chips. It will be wood, chi wood chips, I believe, wood out there still. Yeah, and that's still ADA compliant for the to get to the play structures. Yes, there's different rules on ADA and accessibility. So we focus more on the wheelchair accessibility, on getting to the picnic table, 
and the benches out there versus to the place structures themselves. Thank you. I have Councilmember Steinmetz and Councilmember Harris. Yeah, I, I have a question because I don't necessarily speak construction uh, contracting like some members of our council do. Uh, what is the uh, project contingency in the amount of 22000 That's a authorized amount in which, as the public works director, I can sign off on, on construction changes as they occur in real time versus having a delay in construction and coming back to the council for every little minor change that occurs on a contract. And is that 22000 total or 22000 per change? No, that's 22000 total. So if anything happens above and beyond that, I'll come back to council for a additional uh, request for appropriation for the project. Thank you. Councilmember Harris. Thank you. Um, so uh, how do I put this? Um, we've worked with them before, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they had a, a resume, a list of, uh, you know, projects uh, very long, which is great. But um, I'm just, should I be surprised by the low price? I'm just asking, just out of curiosity. When we do bid reviews, so we go through and we look at their pricing, we look at uh, how they, how they uh, move money between one bid item and another, and in this case, we deem them responsive bidder. So we didn't see any anomalies that would say, while they kind of made this price too low compared to another bid price. Right, but I mean, I'm just saying we have certain vendors we've worked with many times, and you can, one can have a certain confidence. I'm just, should I be struck by the, by the low cost of this relative or just, Happy. I'd be happy about it. Okay. No. <laughs> McCann, okay. McCann Construction's been around quite a while. I've worked with them uh, that, that's not in the capacity of the city, but yeah. I've worked with them as a consultant before on that's different projects. I, that's so what I wanted. Okay. It's not a brand new contractor. They've been around for a while. Thank you. Okay. So the other thing is, and this may be completely out, uh, there's like a, a power pedestal um, on the margin off to the side of that. Um, I'm, I'm sure that's not our property or whatever, but um, is that ever any kind of uh, a, a concern with like a playground thing? Not on this project. That wasn't, I'd have to take a look at that. It may not be on city property or city owned, uh, but we don't have any electrical servicing or anything like that as part of this project. Okay, no, I'm not even, th I'm just thinking it's like, so there's the park, there's a sidewalk, there's like a little margin, and there's this like meter pedestal that just is out in the middle of nowhere. and. I mean, I'm sure you can't move it or anything, but I was just... Yeah, just, I'm assuming there's probably an easement for a utility to be there. And if there's any issues that we run into construction or safety issues, we'll, we'll deal with that during construction and adjust if we need to. That you've made many, many people very happy. Thank you. Um, I, go ahead, Council Member Grace Matsui. On that note, I just wanted to ask if you had an estimated timeline for when it might come along. I knew that question would come up. So unfortunately, like everybody knows, there are still material delays in the industry. Uh, park equipment's been really tough to get through a lot of vendors due to steel uh, fabrication. So our field house park right now, we've been waiting for about six months to get the equipment in order to start the field house park, which we awarded back in the summer. Uh, so this one, I'm hoping it goes a little faster. Uh, so I'm hoping by the second quarter of 2024, we'll be getting this done. That's my hope. Thank you. Um, I actually uh, reached out to Miss Stephanie Harris. She's been an advocate for this play equipment. I'd hope to have her come today. She's unfortunately in another state and was not able to attend, but her and her daughter were ecstatic. And uh, I'll definitely be supporting this. I'm excited for us to get this new play equipment, equipment in this park. It's been a long journey for all of us, but it's good to see that we're finally moving into this phase of it. So I'm very happy, and thank you for all you and your staff's hard work on this. You're welcome. Any other discussion before I take a vote? Seeing none, all those in favor, raise your right hand. It passes unanimously. Ms. Harris, you are going to get a new park, get some play equipment. Your kids are going to be excited. All right, moving on to item two, which is the 2023 budget amendments, and uh, our finance director, Mr. Friend, Jeff Friend, our friend, Mr. Jeff Friend. You have the floor, sir. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Jeff Friend, uh, finance director. Uh, I have some <coughs> slides uh, for those who don't have a packet um, to see the uh, errors that we want to correct um, relating to the uh, budget amendments that uh, were presented on November 9th. So, just 
just wait for the slides. Hopefully this won't be too in the weeds, um, but an accountant's been asked to show spreadsheet things. So um, that can be dangerous sometimes. Um, there were, uh, there's three items in this budget amendment um, in the agenda packet. The, the first two are corrections, uh, and then the third is just a new request. Um, so the original agenda item had schedules for the general fund and for all the other funds. And, um, there were some errors uh, caused by Excel formulas, not doing what we thought they were. Uh, so we're just going to show that just so everybody can understand what happened. Um, so this is a schedule uh, from the general fund that was in the November 9th packet. If you look at the expenditure column, uh, it subtotals to 42400 However, if you look above, obviously that's not the correct subtotal. The Excel uh, formula was adding the shaded in yellow numbers. Uh, it should have been a total of 224,900 uh, had the formula uh, actually included everything it should. This is the exact thing that drives accountants nuts. So, um, and I would also add that this kind of thing um, in a spreadsheet, we have put controls in the model now that if there's anything out of balance anywhere, the whoever's looking at it will have red flags in their face. So um, as I, I want to re-emphasize that we have corrected, you know, the oversights in these formulas. Um, the other one for the general fund is uh, this This was the schedule. You see public works had 10,500 and then transfers totaled 628,500. And this formula was adding everything in yellow. So that one included 10,500 that should not have been included in transfers. Uh, it should have been 618,000. So essentially the impact shown here is the first column shows what was included in the November 9th packet. Second column is what it should have been and then the variance. So that's where the 172,000 uh, comes from for the general fund. So it was actually what was approved in the ordinance was 172,000 short of what actually was in the packet. Um, and then one other one also, and this is one where it's a little bit in the weeds, but there's a schedule in the ordinance and there's schedules in the agenda packet. The ordinance schedule pulls from the other schedules. Uh, you'll see that 114 highlighted on the side. Um, what that did was it took that 10,000 and put it in the uh, fund 114, the ARPA fund instead of the hotel tax fund, which is fund 111. So this is the impact as you can see here in the ordinance schedule, the hotel motel tax should have had $10,000. Um, the American Rescue Plan Act should have had 679,000, um, landed in the wrong place. And so that's the, the math errors um, that were in the original uh, packet and that we're asking just to be corrected just for accuracy. Um, that's the <laughs> conclusion of that riveting um, slide presentation. Um, we also, in Fund 500, which is uh, in the agenda packet also, is a request for $25,000. Uh, the budget was looking really tight and it was looking that way because there was two uh, invoices, one for uh, police radios and then another for uh, replacing the auto lift um, for about 50000 and so that, you know, it might finish under budget, but the 25000 will help cover those costs and, and give us a little bit of breathing room there for finishing under budget for that fund. So that's, that's really the, the acceptance of the uh, agenda packet for or this item. Council Member Dutty. I move to enact draft ordinance. Yes, I'm sorry. I wanted to make sure I was reading the right. Uh, I move to enact draft ordinance number 23-081 relating to the municipal finance amending the 2023 annual budget adopted in draft in ordinance number 1764. I have a second for Councilmember Steinmetz. Any discussion or questions? Councilmember Harris. And I'm just being rhetorical. I'm sure you can guess what I'm going, is there any way in heck that we can avoid this whole 
excel. When I hear the word excel, my blood pressure immediately <laughs> goes up. So, I mean, is there somebody we could pay to make this, to you know, uh, automate the, the software natively to make this? I, I, I don't even have to go on. Yeah. Uh, well, I would say. Um, I, I don't even need a, I'm just, okay. I am just expressing my most profound wish to avoid, whenever I hear the words import and export, um, just my nerve endings start right. to go. Yeah. So. This particular item is not an export export, it's just we created the format, designed it, and then it, we had to strengthen the controls, the, the okay, checks. I'm, not, I'm just, okay. just, just know that whatever could be done, I would fully Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm there for you. I Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, we'll vote on the uh, motion. All those in favor, raise your right hand, and the motion passes 7 0. All right. Introduction of items for future consideration. This time is for the sole purpose of proposing new business items that have not previously been before the council for discussion on a future agenda. This is not a time for questions about old business. Council members can submit questions or seek updates on previously discussed business to the city manager at any time. Do any council members have new business they would like to propose? Council Member Harris. Um, in, uh, I was at the last port commission meeting where they uh, rolled out the land stewardship program and I would ask the council's support in inviting the land stewardship program manager here to present to the council. They last, the port last gave us a very good presentation on tree canopy in 2021, um, what was called the Green Cities Partnership, and it would be a good thing for them to come in and um, talk to us about their best practice in uh, environmental management and see where what I got from that is that they have updates on how the entire area is doing in terms of tree canopy and just environmental. Council Member Harris, I'll be glad to support you on that. Is there another council member that would like to do that? I have, we have plenty enough. We'll work to get that on the agenda in 2024. Uh, I was just going to ask if if we think that that would be a good thing to remand to the Environment Committee, or do we want to have a study session, or is that going to be a discussion? Um, I would like to defer to staff and see what's best in a recommendation well, there. But, but to, coming bad, before I, the council. I, I'd like to bring it to the full council because of basically I, I would like to get the. And that's fine. The, the, the majority sir, of sir, the yeah, sir, you have your support for that. So let's go ahead and, and we'll direct council to see what can be done. We'll reach out and see about scheduling. Thank you. All right. Is there any other new items? Okay. Seeing none, we'll go to board and committee reports, and uh, welcome Council Councilmember Grace Matsui, and you have the honor of being our first board and committee report tonight. Thank you. I actually am not on any boards or committees, but I do have an update for you all. I wanted to say thank you very much to Interim City Manager Tim George and the staff who were present at my orientation. It was very helpful to have that access and be able to meet folks in person to get to know you all. On, let's see, it's already December 9th. I was able to attend the Association of Washington City's Elected Officials Essentials Workshop with Deputy Mayor Buxton and Council Member Oxiger. Uh, we went over things like understanding your role in local government powers, the preventing and interpreting of the ethics code, and introduction to municipal finance, which really, I think, um, could have been eight or nine hours, and I think we went over in about 20 minutes. It was not enough, but it was a good start. And that also covered our open government training, so I am officially trained in public meetings, public records requests, and records retention. A thank you to Bonnie and others who helped register uh, us for that event, and it was highly enjoyable. It, you, were, you were open to eight or nine hours of finance, municipal finance. <laughs> Woo, you're, you're, you're going to be fit right in. Welcome. Uh, <laughs> Councilmember Harris, you have the floor, sir. Um. I had a meeting with the interim city manager, and um, at the risk of sounding snippy, it is notable because it was my first contact with our CEO one-on-one -on -one in over three years. I thank him for that. Um, I attended a start meeting, our community airport roundtable, 
um, there are two openings for the community right now, and I strongly encourage a resident to apply. They have justly received a great deal of criticism, but if you are concerned about the airport, um, do it, and I'll tell you why. It's because they often, because the port is so much larger, they often get access to a lot of information that's very useful way ahead of the city, um, including things on housing, by the way. Um, the port is establishing a mitigation bank, which is extremely smart, um, and we could have done it years ago. Um, Basically, it's a bit like carbon credits in that any agency anywhere, when they need to pay par permit fees, they could pay into our mitigation bank to help us with our environmental issues. Um, and when you look at the eye-popping numbers that are going to be happening with the uh, marina, um, it's something we should think about. For example, when we built the North Sea Wall, we paid 400 grand to Everett to help with their blue herons. I would like going forward that we uh, have other people pay us for our environmental programs. Um, I want to wish everyone happy holidays, especially our staff. Government work means not just dealing with customers, but also electeds who are sometimes no day at the beach. Um, I often hear positive feedback from the public about how expeditiously concerns are being addressed, and I hope our staff feels that sense of appreciation because I hear it. Um, some of that surely comes from the increase in public engagement, but I just want to ask people to be cautious in their optimism. Um, I mentioned that thing with the city manager, not to be snippy, but this is a very long-standing issue, uh, communication, however you define it, and in the coming year, I just want to ask the residents to, you know, keep at it. Don't be complacent. Keep showing up. But be patient. It took a long time to get to where we're at in terms of the lack of public engagement. And it's going to take a long time to um, shift direction. But regardless, it is always an interesting journey for me. And I want to thank the residents for the opportunity to serve again, and it is always my honor. Thank you, and happy holidays. Thank you, Councilmember Harris. We're moving on to Councilmember Steinmetz. I'm sorry. May I ask a clarify, clarifying question of the Councilmember after his report? Really quick, please. Could you, you asked people to be interested in START. Could you say what that is? Thank you. All right, Councilmember Steinmetz, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as many of you know, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Buxton and I are both uh, somewhat involved in the Sound Cities Association, uh, which is the uh, essentially the cities in um, King County who have banded together so that we have one voice, the county has one voice, the city of Seattle has a, another voice, and it provides for a little bit of uh, a balance in that. And um, uh, Deputy Mayor Buxton uh, was just recently reelected uh, to the Sound Cities Association Board. And uh, she is uh, from the South Caucus. There's a, an area down, down here we call the South, and that's the caucus. So congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate so, that. I've been involved in the PIC Committee, which is the public Issues Committee, and um, uh, there's one thing that I do want to bring to everybody's attention, and that is that the uh, King County is considering a, uh, a climate, creating a climate change fund, and uh, there are still a lot of pieces that need to be worked out, um, but Sound Cities is trying to determine how to respond to that. And a lot of the discussion last night was really focused around uh, whether there is a sense of another fund, another tax increase to pay for that fund, and, and whether we thought that was a good idea or not. The city of Kirkland um, put together their own uh, letter 
uh, and to Sound Cities Association, to the board, and to the Public Interest Committee, uh, expressing our concerns about that. And I, I think it would be a good idea if uh, the city of Des Moines were to at least consider uh, writing their own letter uh, about that. And so that's my, my suggestion. I don't know that it needs, uh, it would come back to the council uh, at our next meeting, I would hope, uh, for approval. And yeah, we, uh, we should get on that. We should, we could have, we should have brought that up in new business, but, uh, okay. but if you would like that right now, and we have two other people, we can have the staff address that. Sure. And could you state exactly what you want so the city manager understands? Yes, there is a, there, there is a climate change fund that is being considered by, um, it's a $1 billion fund. I'm sorry. I'm getting some, some help here remembering the numbers. Uh, you know, it's a $1 billion fund is what they're talking about to address climate change issues within King County. Um, the distribution of that is, is not entirely clear yet. Uh, the, where that $1 billion is going to come from is not entirely clear, um, but obviously it'll be some form of taxation. And, um, you know, I think that perhaps uh, we would be well served to give some feedback uh, in a more formal process than just simply a committee discussion uh, on this issue. Uh, to Sound Cities Association advocating uh, or at least being making clear what Des Moines thinks is important about this. So what you're yes. like is a letter pertaining to that matter and I mm -hmm. and I and I think Deputy Mayor Buxton and I can probably draft that um, if you're interested in, in us doing that. That'd be great. Okay. okay. Is, is there a third? We we had the third. We were no problem there. All right. Sorry it All should right. have been new business but I wanted but, to no, it's bring it in as point great. I just committee report. So, if we're going to do it, and we're going to take that process. Then let's make it new business and make it happen. All right. If Thank you. Supported. There was nothing further. Okay. And then now I have Council Member Oxiger. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have no report, but I, I just want to note that it is the last meeting of the year, and wish everybody happy holidays and looking forward to the new year. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Nutting. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the Des Moines Art Commission met on Monday, and the biggest takeaway was uh, Maylene Sproger gave us an uh, update on the Squid of Rama um, down uh, at the Mass Center. And in conjunction with the Mass, Maylene uh, put on this event, and uh, um, there was well over 400 people that attended. It was well attended this year, uh, possibly due to the change of the hours. Instead of being after the mass closed, uh, they ran it with um, the mass being open at the time. And uh, it was well attended, uh, a lot of good feedback. And uh, that was pretty much it for that. Um, I did want to thank my constituents for electing me again for another four years. I'm proud to serve my community and proud to be up here. Um, so thank you very much. Um, and I also wanted to say happy holidays to everybody, to you and yours. I uh, hope it's safe and fun. And I uh, look forward to seeing you next year and serving for the next four years. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Buxton. Thank you, Mayor. Well, I want to join in a hearty welcome aboard. Councilmember Grace Matsui, uh, looking, really looking forward to working with you. I've appreciated connecting already. Uh, so. Good, good, good. Uh, over the last several weeks, I've attended several legislative discussions, uh, re regional coalitions, and I just want to, I'm very pleased, especially in the South County area, that public safety appears everywhere. There is a lot of energy in the county right now from cities uh, to really work the support and resource for public safety. So I'm excited to see what's going to come out of the legislature uh, this spring. And speaking of my appreciation for uh, officers in general, ours in particular, uh, the Shop with a Cop event was fabulous this year, um, put on by the Police Foundation. Huge thanks to Maylene Sproger again, speaking of. And uh, so I appreciate our department partnering with several agencies around and South King Fire. And 
Great, so thank you to our officers and the foundation. I did want to add a little to the climate crisis so that it's not misunderstood that we would not be in favor of supporting things ha having to do with the climate crisis. It's just that uh, there is there are billions of dollars coming from the federal government and the state has invested highly, millions and millions of dollars to the climate crisis. So I think the, the energy is, hey, let's, Let's see if cities uh, are, take advantage of all the spending that's already out there instead of the county coming and taxing again without even seeing how the money that we have is going to go. So I think that there's a little bit of uh, let's, let's see how it works and maybe ask for it later. There's, we are tax burdened, and especially when we're coming on wanting to support public safety, I think um, that's a big consideration. Um, Thank you for your congratulations, council member. I appreciate it. So in closing, you know, this season, uh, my personal tradition is Christmas. And along with my per, uh, tr uh, personal um, tradition uh, and my belief in a God, I, I do want to thank him for a, loving a faulty world and giving us something really, really valuable for free and for being willing to go through pain for people who make mistakes. And I think that's a good example for me to continually be willing to go through challenges and difficulty uh, for people who make mistakes because it's the right thing to do. And um, I'm so thankful somebody does that for me. So happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Hope you enjoy your season. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Buxton. As your mayor, I come to my end of my two-year term. And uh, I was looking back at what we've done in this city, all of us, council, staff, the residents, we've worked through some really tough challenges. One was we came out of COVID, something that the last time it happened was about 100 years ago. And I want to thank everybody in the fact that you all tried to ensure everyone's safety a lot of people had to make sacrifices and so forth but it's worth it but i do want to remind people COVID is still rampant and to take and exercise caution um we passed a bond this broke a 40-year cycle now there's a lot to be determined in what the projects are going to be and look like and some of the details but this was a major step for the city to go forward to advance our future some of the other things we're, gonna, we're dealing with now and we'll be dealing with over the next couple of years, one of the reasons why we have a finance committee, or will, is inflation and the cost of goods sold and the cost of labor has exponentially grown in relation to the revenue sources. So we've got some tough challenges ahead of us there. Um, we, heard so, we heard some of the public speak about crime and issues like that. We have faced unprecedented state policy change and the way the courts adjudicate and punish crime and ramifications for those things that have compounded not only this city but the community and the county as a whole and we've, we've, we've definitely seen the effects from that and it's added new challenges I want to thank our police force for always doing a fantastic job I think you guys are, are unsung heroes in our community and I wholeheartedly thank you um, we've dealt with the new phenomenon, particularly as COVID came in, with the positive and negative sides of social media. It's really had a different effect on the community. Um, information and misinformation and everything are, are rampant in the community. And it's, uh, there's the, what is the Bandolini's law, or I'm sure I got that wrong, but it's like, if there's misinformation, it takes five or 10 times or exponential times the effort to correct it. And it's been something we've dealt with censures and resignations and so forth. And this is the sum of a two-year program. But we've accomplished a lot. You know, like I said, the bond. We, we, the safe routes uh, um, to schools on 24th and then what we're going to do in 200th. Uh, the sky bridge that's going to connect our seniors where they don't have to risk their lives coming across the street. And it takes the terrace and the gardens and brings them together. Um, you know, the theater's coming along. I'm understanding that I think occupancy occurs in the next matter of weeks, which is exciting. Um, we, we did a lot during COVID where we assisted our businesses in a very tough time. I've had many of them tell me 
that if they hadn't got the grants and the availability of, of the monies that they needed during a tough time, they very well might not be here today. Um, we've had vandalism and damage, and we've been able to help the businesses and the staff and your resources and your creativity. I want to wholeheartedly say thank you for coming up ways to help them. And also those in need, those that needed rental assistance and utility assistance and stuff like that. We got an award for uh, delegating our ARPA funds so, so strategically across so many things that we effectively helped so many people rather than put it in one thing or another. I think we tried to help as many people as we could. And so for that, I'm thankful. As I mentioned before, the bond breaks a 40-year cycle of moving, pro you know, moving forward. Um, I also, um, you know, we, as we move into the future, we made some hard decisions and we will be selecting a new city manager and this will be bestowed upon the responsibility of council and the residents. And it does give us an opportunity because we are at a time, as many of you pointed out, where we need to pivot. We need to change. And it's a great time to be optimistic, positive, supportive in ways that we can find the new leadership that's going to represent the changes. A lot of things have changed over the last five or six years. Um, you know, my compliments to our former city manager, Michael Mathias, I thought he did a great job, and compliments to our interim city manager, who's definitely stepped up to the case, as I knew you would. So you've just proved my point, and I'm very happy for that. And I just want to say thank you. But mostly, whether you've liked me as mayor or not, and that's your, that's your right to do so, right? We all, we all have to live that world in our aquarium or fishbowl that we get to live in as elected officials. It doesn't matter. I've appreciated your opinions. I've appreciated your feedback. I appreciated your care and concern about the community. And I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for that honor that I was bestowed in the community. It w as, as it was said by others here, it's always been an honor. Um, I can tell you that this council, whether we agree or disagree, every one of us, and I can say that wholeheartedly on behalf of the council, you have some people here that really ca genuinely care about your community each and every day. And with that, I'd like to uh, wish you all the happiest of holidays as well. The next regular council meeting will be January 4th. And with that, do I have a motion to adjourn? So I have moved. Council Member Nutting and a second by Council Member Steinmetz. All those in favor, raise your right hand. This meeting is adjourned. Have a great holiday.